So this is almost like a temperate rainforest here. We don't really see this much of the property usually because we have to cross the creek to see it. But look how vibrant and green it is. It's really nice. All right, so we're gonna make our way this way and try to scoop forward to the left. All right, so we're out here in the woods on our property, and these are called salal berries. They were used by the uh, Native Americans, and what they would do is they would take this, you could either eat it raw, right that, that's good, or they would mix it up into what they call pemmican. They'd mix these berries up, mash them up, and mix them up with like deer fat and other animal fat, and make like a jerky out of it, and they could store it for the winter. But it's good right now. But if you have more than you want for right now, you store it. Good to know. Yep. These ones are called evergreen huckleberries. They're native to the area. And you just kind of pull them off. And then what you do is you kind of have to like, you, you like sift them to get the leaves off. And some are like dead or like not so good. Then you pull off the ones that look still good. And they're really sweet. And so you make like a jam with them. Native Americans would make like fruit leather and pemmican with them. It's good stuff. You try to harvest as much as you could this time of year so that you had food for the winter. You would have to harvest a lot more of these. Look at how small they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, they look, they harvest like this. You take them and then you harvest and you pull, um, you pull it out. And then kind you're of stripping just, it. You kind of strip the whole thing. Gotcha. Yeah, or if you have a comb, you could have a comb of some sort. How about a brush? <laughs> so we have white seedless grapes, aka green seedless grapes, and Concord grapes. We didn't even pick all of them. There's probably like at least this amount of still on the vibes. Maybe we'll come out in a couple of weeks and check it again. We're gonna do some grape juice and maybe some white uh, white wine. Awesome. We have come to a pumpkin patch. This is the Carpenito Brothers, as you can see. This one is an easy one to get to from where we are because it's right next to the freeway and it's not that far from us. They have a corn maze and you pick your own pumpkins. No lights on the weekday. Is that going to be our pumpkin? Doesn't that look pretty cool? Sure. Right? Oh, this is a nice one too. That guy's a, a, quite a lot larger. Okay. It's got some character to it. That looks pretty good. Nice. making corn chowder for dinner today so we picked up some corn from the pumpkin patch patch that we went to and i'm going to bake them and let them cool down before i um cut the kernels off for the soup 
So I'm making corn chowder, and first off, I'm gonna put some bacon in. The pot is really hot. Like my bacon in. And then there's some of that fat that will add some good flavor to the chowder. Okay, let's turn it down a little bit. After rendering some of that fat for some good flavor in our soup, let's put the bacon aside. And now we're going to put our onions in. Okay, so I just added, added the corn, and I'm going to add some water just to cover the corn and let it sit for maybe 30 minutes or so, and then I'll put the bacon back in at the end. And then I'm also going to make the corn chowder to go, I'm sorry, cornbread to go with the chowder. And season as you like it, salt, pepper, and whatever else you want. Okay, so the corn chowder is just about ready. This is the end phase. I'm gonna add some milk. You can add whatever. If you have half and half, you can use that. You can use whole milk, whatever kind of milk you want to use or you have. I only have 2%. And you can put in as much or as little as you like. I'm gonna give it a stir. Guys, I almost forgot a key ingredient in the recipe. Potatoes! Okay, so let me put these potatoes in and um, cover it, let it sit for another 20 minutes or so until they are nice and soft and tender. Okay, so in our slow cooker, we're gonna add just a little bit of water. And then we're gonna have the apples from our trees right here that I chopped into quarters. I just got the core out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add them to the food processor. So they go in nice little slices. Let's plug it what in. What are we making? We're making homemade applesauce. And usually with this, I usually uh, like to do a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon. It makes a really good applesauce, I think. And we'll just slice them into thin little slices. It's just, oh, and we got some pear from our pear trees too. We'll just add it all on here. And we're gonna have a really nice. These are apples from our apple tree and I usually don't like applesauce. I was never an applesauce person until I've had his homemade applesauce. So then what we do is the food processor fills up and we just dump it in the slow cooker and then let it do the slow cooker do its thing. Yay. And repeat. And repeat, yep. Mm -hmm. And then cinnamon and brown sugar. How long do you let it sit for, simmer? Uh, it does a slow cook about uh, six to eight hours. Okay. 